Ariel Hawani alongside Norman Park who meets Rustam Khabilov this Saturday at UFC Fight Night London on UFC Fight Pass. Norman, I uh, follow you on Twitter and I saw you posing in front of the, uh, the Belfast airport and then moments later I noticed that you missed your flight. Were you spending too much time outside the airport posing and not paying attention to your itinerary? Um, I think you can blame my coach for that. That was his fault, you know. I was like... He sorts all that out, I pass him the information, he's like, I have 12.55 instead of 12.05. So he was looking at the return flight home instead of the flight, the outbound flight. So um, we blame him for this one. He, he owes me that there, $200, whatever it was. How big of a headache was that? Did you get on the next flight, I don't know how many you know, flights are out of Belfast to London. I'm assuming a lot. Was it a big headache though? No, 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 no. It was only like, a, we, we had to wait there for a few hours. There was actually one at three o'clock. So we only hung about there for a few hours, which wasn't too bad. I thought we'd been there till like next morning or something, but um, that was good. We're here. I saw you throw your name into the hat for the uh, the Conor McGregor sweepstakes. You weren't really being serious about that, right? Would you have really taken that fight? Why not? Well, you had this fight. So? That's the bigger fight. Obviously. <laughs> you know, change my bum life, mate. <laughs> um, as my coach says, strike while iron's hot, but, um, you know... Um, I know Connor wanted to fight me a long time ago before at the start, but I'm sure that all blew by. There's, there's no animosity there whatsoever. Um, I'll fight anyone, no problem. It, it doesn't really matter. You know, every fighter has a pose as a different threat. So, but the Diaz fight was, um, was something everyone wanted to see. Me personally, so, uh, and I just watched the, the, the press conference last night, which was pretty funny. Um, uh, the smack talk was real good. I, I know Diaz never said too much. I'm not too sure if he was stoned off his nuts, but um, he, uh, Connor was always getting the edge in the smack talk, which was pretty funny, man. Well, obviously you have a big fight ahead of you, Rustem Khabilov. Um, I understand there was a bit of a, a confrontation at the hotel. What happened there? I was drinking my coffee, minding my own business. He comes up with uh, his entourage or whatever. I don't know exactly what he was saying, but it was English, broken English, and he was like, um, why are you smack talking? Why are you sh talk shit on Twitter? I'm like, man, whatever you see on Twitter is, you know, if you take that shit personal, then that's your problem, you know? Anyone gets at me on Twitter, I laugh it off, you know, but some people take shit personally, and too bad if that's, that, that's your own fault if you take that shit personally. So he was, um, he was very intense. I could see it in his eyes and his face. He tried to square up to me, so I stood right up into his face, you know? I wasn't going to back down... Not one bit. And I says, well, I'll tell you what, we can settle this here on Saturday night. And he goes, I'm going to fuck you up. And I says, well, come on here, bring it. And he goes, fuck you. And I says, well, fuck you too. So, and that's it. May, may it be a good fight, you know, and he's desperate. I see desperation in his, he says to me that he smells fear. How can he smell fear? What, what was he talking about? How can anybody smell fear? That's, a, that's, that's him. The fear is on him. You know, he's the one that's got the pressure on him. I ain't got no pressure on me. And I respect uh, every Russian, I respect any fighter, but anything you see on Twitter, never take it personal. And I think he just took some shit too personal, which is his own fault, so fuck him. Did he, did he up the stakes here? Has he now you know, motivated you a little more going into this, even more so than you were a couple days ago? Well, possibly, yep, yep. Things could get heated at the way ends, you know, we'll see what happens there. But, um, you know, I remember, I remember when I first started judo, uh, I remember my judo coach saying, one day you'll meet a Russian, okay, <clears throat> at the highest point of fighting in the world. You'll meet a Russian someday, and I was like, I never ever kind of understood what he meant. You'll meet a Russian one day, and he'll be uh, one of your toughest fights to date. So now that it's here, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if it's my toughest fight to date. I believe I've been in there with some of the toughest, strongest wrestlers in the game. And, you know, I'm big. I'm strong. I saw him. He's short. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the bigger fighter in there. And I'm strong, I'm deceivingly strong. People think just because I'm tall, I'm skinny, like they think I'm not strong. I'm I'm deceivingly strong. I always train with big guys at 90 plus kilos, so we'll see when he tries to body lock and slam me on my head, he'll understand that it's not going to be all plain sailing for him, so I'm hoping we can stand and box in the fight in, in the ring. I'm hoping we can stand and box right toe to toe there. But I thought that in my last fight and it never happened straight into the grappling exchanges, but so what, you got to adapt and that's, that's the way it is.
Uh, I'll end on this. Speaking of the last fight, you were going into that fight on a losing streak, and I know you weren't particularly happy with the performance, but you got the win. You're now back on track. He's on a losing streak. Can you compare the, the, the Norman Park sitting here today to the one in October going into that fight, and you kind of understand the desperation? Do you feel like he'll almost just try to get the W to get back on track, sort of like your approach in October? Yeah, of course, 100%. I understand that because I've just been there in my last fight, yeah. so I can tell, like, Maybe with the whole smack talk on Twitter, maybe he'll, he's going to be really aggressive and come at me and try and knock me out, but I'll be prepared for that. If he wants to come aggress with me, I'll take him down. I'll put the Sambo master on his back and let him try and get up from bottom. Or else maybe he's trying to play it cautious and look to stay on the outside and leap in with big, uh, big shots and try, and try and win the fight by single strikes or whatever, but I'm going to be on his face the whole time. I'm going to pressure him straight off the bat and... and there's no pressure on me. I'm going in there to let my whole game go. I know there's a better me to show. I know that in my mind. I don't give a fuck what anyone else says. I know that in my mind and my, and my teammates and my coach knows that. So I'm going to fight my fight and show that, um, that, I, that I could be in the top 10, no problem. I believe that I could slot into the top 10 by the end of this year, no problem. Good luck, Norman. Thank you. Thanks, man. Cheers, buddy. Thank you.